we didn't want to just create yet another ethics for CS because including embedded ethics, mm -hmm. uh, whose ethics you know, people sometimes ask, well, we need to understand how ethical systems work around the world. They're not just ethical systems. How do people around the world think about what it is to be human and what's valuable? So I think we need to be better about our curriculum. start the conversation with Harvard's Embedded Ethics Program. You're one of the faculty founders of the program, and you founded the program with Professor Barbara Gross. Uh, since the establishment, the program has provided high quality education every semester. So I'd love to hear about how the program was established and how the program is growing and what kind of trials and errors it has experienced and what kind of accomplishments it has made. Happy to do that. Thanks. The origin story of the program. So the story really starts in the fall of 2016. So Barbara, as you mentioned, my colleague at CS, she's teaching a course that semester called Intelligent Systems Design and Ethical Challenges. 144 students petitioned to get into this course, and she selected 24 because it was a seminar, it was a small course. And she chose students from computer science and philosophy and of different disciplines, all of whom were interested in the intersection of ethics and AI. So what happened was on a Tuesday they met and they talked about the Facebook emotion contagion experiment and yeah. generally, you know, what happens when you're gathering data from user profiles. And the students were very upset about the way profile data was being used and so I talked about the ethical issues. On Thursday, she gave the students an assignment. She said, you're on the money team for a social media platform, and you've got a great new client with a fitness program. Based on your knowledge of platforms like Facebook and other social networking platforms, list five features of a user's profile that you want your team to use for the algorithm to decide who to post ads to. So the students did this with great gusto as they always do. And Barbara at the end said, okay, now how many of you thought about the ethical implications of what you've done? Zero. Right. Zero. <laughs> so she was horrified. This is a motivated group. So she got in touch with me. She said, Allison, I'm sending students to Facebook and Google and they don't know how to think about the ethical implications of what they do. We need to work on this. So, you know, I like a challenge and it seemed important. So we got to work on it and really we decided very quickly that what we didn't want to do, and I think James mentioned this in his conversation with you, we didn't want to just create yet another ethics for CS. I mean, those have a, a purpose, but we worried that that would just reinforce what she was finding in her class, namely that students are just separating these two things. So we wanted to figure, how can we get students to think of ethical reasoning as just part of the job of a computer scientist? And that's where we hit on the idea over pizza of embedded modules. If we embed the modules in existing courses and tie them to the content, so we can show students how the issues arise out of whatever they're studying in class and give them some hands-on experience. Maybe that's the answer. But then we had the challenge. We can't take over half of a CS professor's course. So we can only get in there once or twice. So that's when we hit on the distributed model. You know, if we create these for lots of courses, then students will run into ethical reasoning again and again and again. And with that, they can develop a habit of thinking about these issues. And they also see that they arise is not just in AI and machine learning, but in hardware. There are all kinds of areas where the issues arise. So that's how it got going. We started that spring of 2017. We enlisted a graduate student from MIT, actually. 
who worked with four CS professors who we knew would be interested. And we had four modules and four courses. To date, we've grown a lot. We have done 84 modules in 37 distinct computer science courses. So we really, we, the demand has gotten more than we can handle. Actually, we've had to turn people away. So that's the growth at Harvard. And because of people like you, frankly, we're also developing outside of Harvard. Other schools have really taken this on as a model. MIT, of course, being one, and Stanford, Nebraska, Technion, Toronto. Every school has its own DNA, and they have different resources and challenges. So that's one of the challenges for us now is trying to figure out how to help schools that are different from Harvard develop yeah. their own version of it. That's still, it's their own. It's going to work differently. Right. And like, what if you have a school that doesn't have philosophers? Then what do you do? So that, that's one challenge that we've found. All of our basic concepts right now that we use to think about ourselves are being challenged by technology. You know, what is a person? What is a human organism? What is life? What are emotions? We've got to make philosophy relevant to today.